Before we start our service today, I have some sad news. Many of you are aware of this, but on Friday, Phil Archer passed away. You knew him as a staunch member of the church community, and of course, our faithful organist here at St Stephen's for many years. Phil's wife, Jill, is here today with her daughters, Elizabeth and Shula, and so is Phil's sister, Christine. I'm sure that everyone would like a moment to remember Phil and perhaps offer up a private prayer for his friends and loved ones. Now oh, you come. Come on. All right, let's get this off you then. That's it. There you are, Mum. Hi, Dad. Oh, hi, Pip. How's it going? Uh, half a dozen so far. And there's plenty look like they're on the way. Do you want a hand? Oh, yeah. That, that'd be really nice. Thanks, love. Shall I do some navels? Egg. Uh, could you just check if that one's cleared first? Yeah, sure. No, can't see anything. Right. She was the first. Keep an eye on her, shall I? Yeah, thanks. Oh, here comes the other one. Go on. Go on, push. That's it. Why didn't <sighs> Grandad like sheep? Ah. Uh, <laughs> um... Well, you always thought that they were very stupid animals. <laughs> they are a bit, aren't they? Well, compared to pigs, they are, certainly. <laughs> oh, silly thing hasn't realised she's got two. Come on, girl. He worked with the sheep, though. Oh, yeah. When he had to. He was always there when we were lambing. <laughs> I remember your christening. What? Well, some ewes got out through a bit of dodgy hedge in Blackland. Grandad and I had to get them back in and patch up the hole, all in our Sunday best. <laughs> really? Yeah. You should have heard him go on. Did he not like you expanding the sheep, then? Oh, no, to be fair, once he passed the farm over, he was... He was very clear that it had to be our decision. Your mum and me. He always took an interest, of course, but... We were the ones who had to carry Brookfield on. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Got the idea now. That's good. Go on, Mum. I'll, um, I'll do some numbers next. Now, with Lent almost upon us, I've decided to seek inspiration from our Lord's suffering in the wilderness and, in a very small way, to go into the wilderness myself. Or at least to deny myself the comfort of a bed and a solid roof over my head at night. I'm planning to spend the period of Lent under canvas, sleeping in my trusty tent. I'll be looking for some different locations to pitch my tent. And I'd be grateful if anyone would like to join me. <laughs> Not overnight, I hasten to add. <laughs> but if you wanted to drop by, have a chat, share a short meditation on Lent or even a cup of coffee, then you'd be very welcome. I am inviting sponsorship in aid of Refugee Support International, who, as you know, are based in Felpersham. I will be including the six Sundays of Lent in my task. No running back to the vicarage after evensong for me. <laughs> and finally, a date for your diaries. This year's Women's World Day of... How are you doing? All right. With two of us, it's pretty smooth at the moment. Good. How's the ring round going? OK. A couple of people had heard. Already? That's the farmer's bush telegraph, I suppose. Maggie said a nice thing. Reckoned your dad was one of nature's gentlemen. That is nice. Mm. Well, he was. Uh, Pip, I was wondering about your birthday... We don't want it to get, you know, missed with everything that's going on. 
So how about if I cook a special family meal for you? Uh, in the evening? Yeah. No, sorry. Jude's taking me out. Oh. Could you do it on Thursday instead? I don't know. It's parish council that evening, isn't it, David? Hmm? When? Thursday. Uh, yeah. If you're still going. Oh, yeah, I'll go. So it'd have to be fairly early. Well, that's all right. So you're staying at Glebe Cottage then, Elizabeth? Yes, I came over on Friday. I'll probably stay for a few days. That's nice. Shula did suggest I could stay with them, but... Well, nicer to be in your own home, eh? And with Elizabeth on hand... It means I've got someone to look after. It's meant to be the other way around. Why are you so close to your father? We've been looking after each other, haven't we? Yes. Anyway, it's just as well you've been at home. Yes, we've had such a lot of visitors. Oh, Phil was very much loved. He was. It's been very touching. Hello, Alan. Hello. It's good to see you, Shula. Thank you. I- I've really appreciated your prayer. I know you had us in mind. Of course. Um, Mum, Pat Fletcher had to rush off, but she said she'd call around in the week, if that's OK. Oh, of course. It's uh, lovely to hear so many heartfelt tributes, isn't it? It is. It's very difficult to imagine Ambridge without him. Yes. He's left a great legacy, though, with all of you and the grandchildren. I I do see him in Daniel sometimes. And you're a strong family. You have your faith. Yes. I'm thankful for that. Sure, has been wonderful. I bet she has. You can share your grief freely and support each other fully. Not everyone has that. I hope I'm not intruding. No, Clary, not at all. I just wanted to say how sorry I am for all of you. Thank you. I wasn't sure if you'd be at church, Jill. I've got a little summer. I'd like to pop round if it's not too much trouble. No, that's fine, Clary. You're welcome any time. I'm just going to stroll down the Herefords. Is Pip still in the lambing shed? Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely of her. I appreciate it. Have you got time for a sandwich? I'm not really hungry. Maybe later? Yeah. I was thinking about the funeral. Well, you know, afterwards, the wake. Uh Uh-huh. What do you think about offering to have it here? Yeah, fine. You're OK if I suggest it to Jill? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Mum will help with it. She'll be here on Monday for about four days. Good. Good. All right, well, I'll see you later, then. Oh, uh, did Josh find you? <laughs> he did, yeah. What did he want? He volunteered to help with the lammy. Well, it is half term. When I asked him about money, he just said, whatever, he just wanted to help. And Pip, too. Yeah. Yeah. When something like this happens, it makes you think about what's important, doesn't it? Was this the one, Mum? Yes, that's it. Oh, that's a lovely vase. Oh, well, they're lovely flowers. Mm. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, no, thanks. You sound a bit bunged up. Oh, just got a bit of a cold coming, that's all. I could mix you up some hot lemon. No, Jill, no. Really, I had a cup of tea before I come out. If it's anything like when my old dad died, you'll be awash with the stuff. It is a bit like that. Um, was there anything else you needed, Mum? No. If you're sure, because Alistair will have lunch ready soon. Yes, you go off, Shula. I'll pop in later. That's fine. Go on, don't keep the food waiting. <laughs> All right, then. Oh, ring me if you need anything. I will. Bye, Clary. Yeah, see you, Shola. Take care. Yes, bye. I worry about how Daniel's taking it, you know. He got very close to Phil recently. Yeah. Looked at the stars together, didn't they? <laughs> how long is it since Jethro died? It'll be 23 years this June. Is it really? <laughs> Did I ever tell you about that time he thought... Phil had gone a bit balmy after he dropped a hay bale on Phil's head. Oh, 
Was this when my Eddie were, were when he had to get a new piano for the book? <laughs> That's right. And he had some trouble with the van or something. And and he left the piano Apollo tree. So Jethro walked in and found Phil happily playing some tune surrounded by the pigs. Oh, what a picture. Eh? Phil never <laughs> could resist a piano wherever it was. He'd have to give it a little try, even if it was just a few chords. <laughs> I still can't take it in, you know. No. I keep expecting to hear his key in the door and him kicking his boots off and then walking in asking, what's for supper? Take a while for it to sink in. I know. You were together for so long. Mum, I've just found... Oh, hello, Clary. Hello again. Yes, darling. Um... Well, I think I'd better be going now. Oh, if you're sure. Yeah, you've got stuff you want to sort out, I expect. But, look, if there's anything I could do, don't hesitate. Thank you. And thank you again for the flowers. Oh, you're welcome. Now, you stay there. Know the way out. And bye-bye, Elizabeth. Uh, bye, Clary. You all right? What is it? Uh, well, um, I thought it was time I made myself useful, so I was trying to find a pen to write down a list of what needs doing. Yes, so I looked in Dad's desk. You know, in the top drawer, well, I, I found this. It, it's addressed to you. Well, I mean, it's got your name on it. Oh, oh Elizabeth. It doesn't look like a letter. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, would you like me to No, go? no. Stay here. To my wife on Valentine's Day. You bring me sunshine every day of my life. Oh, my love, Phil. <laughs> Mum. <laughs> he never really, really believed in all that sentimental stuff, you know, but, but he never missed a Valentine's Day because he knew, he knew it was important to me. <laughs> he, was, he was such a lovely man. <laughs> There you are, Shula. I could have made it. No, don't be silly. Well, thank you. Um, do you think Mum needs a hand looking the documents out, Auntie Chris? No, I, I did offer before you came, but she seemed quite happy to do it herself. Mm. I'm so impressed with how she's bearing up. We all are. I know she wasn't sure about going to church yesterday, but she was glad she did. Alan was very thoughtful. Yes, I thought so. Ooh, so many people were wondering who would take over as organist, you know. Good old Valda stepping in like that. Yes. I wonder if she'd take it over. Oh, I'm not sure. She certainly isn't as good as Dad was. Got them. Oh, morning, Shula. Oh, hello, Mum. How are you? Oh, you know, not too bad. I was just saying to Auntie Chris, if you want me to come to the register office That's with you... That's kind, but... I'm sure Chris and I are up to the job, aren't we, Chris? Certainly. Yeah, I know that. I, I just thought... No, really? You must have enough to do. Well, I've only got to go to the shop to get a card for Tony. Oh, yes. Oh, it's tomorrow, isn't it? Would you like me to get an extra one for you? Um, I don't think so. We'll look for one while we're in Borchester, if that's all right with you, Chris. Of course. It'll be nice to have something else to think about for a while. All right. Um, speaking of cards... Yes? Uh... Elizabeth found this yesterday in your father's desk. Oh, Mum. He obviously had it ready for Valentine's Day, organised as ever. Oh, lovely. Have you seen this, Auntie Chris? Yes. What a blessing. Isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. I'll go. No, it's all right. No, no, I'll... I'll it's fine. Oh, dear. Don't worry. It's just hard seeing the children so upset. Of course it is. So, did you find Phil's birth certificate? Yes, it was where I thought it was, and our marriage certificate. And the form the doctor gave you. All present. Right, that's all we need, then. Come on through. Oh, hello, Jill. Christine. Kathy, hello. Good morning, Kathy. 
I hope that this isn't a bad time. No, not at all. Uh, we've got a birthday party at the golf club tonight, so I'm not going in until lunchtime. I thought I'd make some soup. Uh, well, I thought you might like some. That's very thoughtful, thank you. Pat and Frieda bought a casserole round at the weekend. It was very welcome, I can tell you, and this is as well. Good. Could you put it in the fridge, Shula? Yeah, of course. Well, don't worry about the container. I'll pick it up later in the week. All right. And how's Kenton coping? I haven't seen him since Saturday. Oh, he's, you know, he's coping in his own way. Good. I persuaded him to take today off. I should think so. Although he still seems to want to keep busy. Well, that's often the best way, isn't it? Yes, sometimes. Keeping busy how? Sorry? How's he keeping busy? Oh, well, um, there's a lot on with the conversion of Jack's, of course. Oh, he shouldn't be worried about that today. No, that's what I said. But, well, you know Kenton. Always does things his own way. They're two metres. OK, OK, OK. Hey, great. Oh, I can't wait to see them. Oh, me neither. <laughs> now we've got it, mate. Don't worry. Ah, uh, looks like I arrived just in time. Are you going to give us a hand with the ramp then, love, eh? Look at these nails. <laughs> Only joking. You ready, Ed? Yep. Oh, thank you. Come on, how oh, you come? Oh. Come on. Oh, look at them. Aren't they gorgeous? They look in good nick, yeah. That's it. Go on. You know, Vicky, this is just the first batch. Twelve down carving cows and effers. Look at those eyelashes. I'd kill for lashes that luscious. <laughs> luscious lashes. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Anyway, the second lot, they'll arrive in the summer. And those gorgeous brown coats. Well, they're no different from the ones that are already here, are they, Ed? No, no, they're not. Oh, they are, though, Mike. These are my little beauties. Oh, not that little. Anyway, the others, they'll be autumn carvers, so we even out the milk production through the year, shall Yeah, we? let's just hope we get plenty of females, that's all. Why do you want females? Uh, well, because they usually make better milkers than bulls. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we get bulls, they'll be off down the road. Yeah. Not much good for beef, these things. What do you mean, down the road? Well, you know, the, the chop. For slaughter, you mean? While they're so little? I'm oh, afraid so, love. Oh, no, not while they're little babies. Oh, it can't be helped. We've got no choice. They're not worth anything. Can't fatten them up for beef. No meat on them, that's the trouble. Oh, well, I think it's disgraceful. You farmers can be very hard. Well, that's that. How do you feel now it's official? I'm really not sure, Chris. Ah, well, it's done anyway. Anyway, come on. Let's go and find a birthday card for Tony. Well, where do you want to go? Well, they usually have nice ones in the Borset bookworm. Well, it's just around the corner. Come on, then. Right. Chris? Yes? This parish council meeting on Thursday, are you sure you'll be up to it? Oh, yes. It's an awful lot of bother. I just wonder if someone could stand in for you. No. I want my ringside seat to see who'll be voted in as chair, Linda or Neil. Oh. And it's going to be my last meeting as clerk. Phil would be very cross with me if I chickened out of it. Kenton. Yeah, hang, hang on a sec. Hmm? Programmable uh, lighting. I just want to see whether we can match the, uh, the lighting to the time of day... Automatically. Well, isn't that going to be expensive? Well, let's have a look. Uh, no, 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 that's for houses. Hold on. Uh, anyway, I've uh, got to go now. Yeah, OK. Uh, the soup's in the saucepan. All you have to do is heat it up. Fine. And there's yesterday's lasagna in the fridge. You could do some salad with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably won't be back until gone 11. Yes, you said. I'll have my phone on, so if you need to ring... No, just... I won't. I'll be fine. My love, I don't think you are. Oh, don't go on, Cathy. No, you've just lost your father. You shouldn't be fine. And it's OK not to no, be. I'm fine, all right? Not everyone has to go to pieces in a crisis. Well, I'm not saying you should go to pieces. Just take some time. No, I've got too much on. Look, after you've had some lunch, why not take a break, eh? I mean, go for a walk or something. Look, please, stop telling me what to do. Kenton. Look, aren't you meant to be at work? All right, um, 
Yeah. <clears throat> you know where I am if you need me. They look so contented. Yeah, well, don't take them long. <laughs> oh, they should have names, Mike. Huh? We should give them all names. Yeah, well, I do. I mean, all the ones here have got names. This one's Jasmine, I reckon. No, oh, we've already got a Jasmine. And that one's a Clarabelle. It's, it's best to wait for a while, then the names sort of come. Oh, all right. <laughs> you know best. Oh, it's great to see you so enthusiastic <laughs> about them, love. Uh, and we really want to say a big thank you for putting the money up, don't we, Ed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. Oh, well, I was just so delighted to be able to help. Help make your dreams come true, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and Ed... I know you'll look after my investment. Yeah, of course I will. I'll be round here checking up on you. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, whenever you want. And when the first one's going to have a baby... Like your calf, love. I want to be there. Really? <laughs> well, are you sure? It can be a bit messy. I spend my working life looking into people's mouths. It can't be much worse than that. Well, it's... No, quite... I wouldn't miss it for the world. You've got to promise to let me know as soon as it's going to happen. It might be in the middle of the night. I don't mind. I'll be there. It's a promise. All right, yeah, I, I promise. No, w well, I'm looking at the plans now and it doesn't show that. Look, no, the bar is meant to sweep round. Yes, we did. We said sweep round, not have a pathetic little curve on the end. Of... What? No, we haven't signed this off yet. It, no, we haven't. Look, OK, listen, listen. I don't care what Don said. I am going to be running the place and I... What? OK, yeah. All right. I will. Ugh, idiot. Oh, calls him a designer. It's... Oh. Oh, sorry. It's only me. <sighs> Shula, sorry. I, I didn't hear you come in. How's it going? I'm having to deal with morons. Oh, dear. You know, who can't understand the simplest instructions. Have you got time for a little chat? Well, I've, I've got all this to do. Y yes, so... I know. But if you could spare a couple of minutes, I'd... I'd love to well, just tell you how I'm feeling. Oh, sorry. Yes, of course. Here, come on, sit down. I think you're the only one who'll really understand. Well, I'll try. It's as if... Oh, it isn't just that Dad's gone. Now everything's different. How the family fits together. Do, do you know what I mean? Oh, well, sort of. I mean, well, well, yes, yeah, that, that's how I feel. You do? Yeah, well, it's, it's like I'm just, well, well, he was the oldest man and, you know, suddenly I am. Yeah, uh, strange, isn't it? Yeah. Probably even more for you because at least there's still mum. Yeah, that's really made me think. I mean, there's that much more responsibility. Mm. And it's like... This is my last chance. What do you mean? Well, Jack's, you know, all, all of this. If I don't make this work, what? Well, I've got to, you know. I'm 51. Oh, Kenton, that's not old. Well, not nowadays. It, oh, it feels it. I mean, how many more chances am I going to get, Shula? I mean, I tried the antiques, I, I tried the sailing. And, you know, Muriel's getting older. I, I want to support her. I want to have something behind me when she goes to college. Oh, I know that's important. It's only been three days. You should give yourself a little break to come to terms with things. Yeah. I can't. What? I, I can't, Shula. I can't stop. Kenton. I mean, no, look, if I stop, I, I just... I'm not sure that I'll ever be able to start again. Oh, Kenton, of course you will. You're strong. <laughs> Am I? With the things that matter, you are. And you don't have to do this on your own. I know it feels like it's all on you now, but there's Kathy and David and Elizabeth. Yeah, I know. And there's me. You can always count on me. Whatever happens, we've still got each other. Haven't we? Yes, we have. Of course we have. Thanks. Thanks, sis. I'm off now. Uh, Ursula, can you hold on a minute, though? Can you take the tent? Mm. In this suit? It's not dirty. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll slide it down the ladder if you're worried. Oh, go on, then. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, is that it? 
Yeah, just the bed to come. I've got it. Oh, that lethal thing. There must be soldiers all over the world with scars from those beds. Oh, I just need the knack, that's all. Well, Alan, I'll be happy to live my life having never acquired that particular skill. Fair enough. Have you got everything? Ah, uh, that's what I was just going to check. After I've discussed the funeral with Jill, I'm going to pack my rucksack so uh, I don't suddenly find I'm missing something essential. And then you'll be all prepared for this mad Lenten adventure. Well, nearly. I've got to sort out my schedule. Well, you know you're going to spend the first week on the green. Yeah, so as all systems go. <sighs> you do like to make things hard for yourself, don't you? That is the principle of Lent. And give me Diwali any day. Hey, we have our feast days as well. I know. <laughs> hmm. Give my love to Jill. All right. Oh, speaking of essentials, um, it, while you're in Felpersham, could you pop into the outdoor shop in Elton Road and get me a new gas cylinder? What sort? Um, no, I I give me the old one. It's, um, uh, it's just like this. Just the one? Um, no, no. Better make it two. Uh, no problem. It's bad enough you're camping out in February without having to eat cold meals as well. In fact, you know it's your turn to cook this evening in your last night of comfort. I, uh, ah, yes, I was... Uh... <laughs> Don't worry, I'll sort something out. Um, um, oh, morning, Fallon. No, Sid? <laughs> he started work already? <laughs> I wish. Well, what's up? Didn't you hear him in the night? No. No, oh, he must have been up half a dozen times. Oh, no. I tried blaming that fish pie, but I had it and I've been fine. Uh, me too. Oh, it's probably just a bug. Oh, we don't get it. Yeah, too right. I've told him to stay in bed for now. Oh, if he's got a bug, he can't be serving customers. Well, I can run the bar. Trouble is, I was planning to help feed him with all the pancake day preparations. Oh, oh yeah, it's Tuesday, isn't it? I'm going to give Clary a ring, see if she's free. Oh, I could do it. Well, ring Clary. No, <laughs> help Frida. Oh, I thought you had stuff planned. Well, me and Rollo were going to talk about arrangements for the new songs, that's all. And we can do that another day. Well, that would be brilliant. Thanks, love. Hello, Alan. Morning, Jill. Is now convenient? Yes, we said 11. Come in. Thanks. Oh, hold on. I better get these out of your way. Oh, lots of cards, I see. Mm -hmm. Not the usual collection of bills and circulars. No, people are very kind. <sighs> Shame it's not prompted by a happier occasion. Ah, oh, Carol and John Tregoran. Oh, you recognise the handwriting? And the Bristol postmark. They were before your time. Do you think I met them, actually, at your golden wedding? Oh, you may have done. Very striking woman, if I recall. Oh, yes, that's Carol. She always was a beauty. And he's got a beard mm. and had a little bit of the Jim Lloyds about him. They're a lovely couple. It was such a shame when they moved. Anyway, come and sit down. Thank you. I've made some coffee. I hope that's all right. Oh, that'd be lovely, Jill. Thanks. Very welcome on this cold morning. It is cold, isn't it? I didn't put a coat on as it was so close. I was feeling it, I could tell you. Help yourself to milk and sugar. I oh, don't take sugar, thanks. Right. I'll do some milk, thank you. So, how are you keeping? Not too bad, actually. Chris and I registered the death yesterday. I thought that would be worse than it was. Good. I'm so fortunate having such a lot of family around me. Yeah, it must be a comfort. It's all been wonderful. But I do worry about them. After all, they've lost their father. They've got their own grieving to do. Of course they have. Anyway, should we get down to business? Yes, let's. I should say that Shula did offer to handle all the funeral arrangements, including talking to you about the service. Oh, I see. But I told her I'd rather deal with it myself. I hope it doesn't sound too morbid, but Phil and I had talked about our funerals. That's not morbid at all. It's very sensible. And being Phil, of course... He had very clear ideas of what he wanted. Uh, vicars are much the same. We see so many, like he must have done. Yes. Right, uh, let's just confirm the time first. 2pm next Tuesday the 23rd. That's eh? right. Elizabeth's arranged for a notice in the Echo. Oh, she's not here? No, she's back at Lower Locksley for a few hours today. Ah, work has to go on, doesn't it? Yes. And it's a burial? There's a plot near where his parents are buried. Yes. So, shall we start with the music? Um, I assume you have some favourite hymns. Yes, but first, um, this is slightly awkward. 
Go on. Phil never really thought that highly of Velda. I'm sure she does a good job at Penny Hassett. No, no, I, I do understand. Uh, is there an organist you prefer? If he's available, Basil Young from Felpersham Cathedral. Phil always respected him as a musician. Do you want me to ring him? I could do it. No, 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 that's fine, Jill. I'm sure Basil will be happy to be asked. Thank you. I've done a list of the hymns. Oh, we are organised. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Yes. It's lovely. And I vow to thee my country. Such a moving hymn. Shall I get Basil to get in touch with you to discuss an introit? Yes, please. Right, now here's some suggestions. It's a, it's a lovely selection. And I'm sure you've uh, you've thought about readings, too. 1 Corinthians 13. I know people think of it as a wedding reading. Oh, no, Jill, that's perfect. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Yes. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. Exactly. I'm so glad you agree. Oh, it'd be very moving. And then for the other readings, I thought I ought to ask the family... I'm sure some of them will want to say something. Or possibly a friend, too? Someone from outside the family? I do have to give that some thought. There are certainly going to be a lot of people attending. Well, I should expect so. Ruth and David offer to have the wake afterwards at Brookfield. And that would be nice, obviously. But I'm just concerned there'll be too many people. And it's a lot of work for them. So that's something I'm going to sort out later today. Everything all right, love? Yeah, sort of. Sort of? Uh, well, there's been a bit of a mix-up with the eggs. It looks like Frida ordered in trays and they've delivered in dozens. Oh, Fallon! She reckons we haven't got enough for tonight. Well, we can't be short of eggs on pancake day. No, well, I'm just going to pop round to Neil. He said he's got plenty that he could let us have. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Mike were in at lunchtime. Oh, yeah. Yeah, him and Ed took delivery of their new cows yesterday. Yeah, Ed said they were coming. Mike well, was full of their expansion plans, you know, the new milk rooms. Ed didn't talk about much else at the moment. <laughs> he was saying how into it all Vicky is. Well, she put up the money, didn't she? Yeah, yeah if it weren't for her, they wouldn't have been able to do it. Hmm. Mike were... Well, it was just nice to see him up. Good mm. afternoon. Hello, Jill. Hi. I hope I'm not interrupting. No, no, I was just going. Oh, see you, Mrs. Archie. Yes. Um, I'll be back as quick as I can, Mum, all right? Yeah, no problem. Races don't start till six. Um, what can I get you, Jill? Oh, nothing, thank you. I was hoping to have a word. How are you doing? All right. People in here have been saying what a shock it must have been. It was. They've all been saying lovely things about Phil. He'll be so missed, I can tell you. Thank you. So, what can I do for you? It's about the funeral, or rather, the wake afterwards. Oh, right, I see. I was wondering if I could book your function room. Oh, let me get the diary. Now, when uh, would this be? Next Tuesday. Oh, 23rd. Uh, what sort of time? We've got an acoustic night on. Well, uh, the funeral's at 2, mm -hmm. so from, I don't know, 3, 3.30. And when do you think you'd need it till? Um, perhaps six o'clock. Do you think that's long enough? Oh, yeah, I'd say so. And would you want the bar open up there? Oh, yes, please. And what about food? Do you have some buffet menus I could look at? Yeah, I do. And you can be sure we'll make it really special for you. <sighs> Two gas cylinders as requested. Oh, thanks, love. All packed. Uh, yeah, now I've got these, and I'll pitch the tent nice and early tomorrow afternoon. It's not too late to back out, you know. No way! You could blame an outbreak of sanity. <laughs> not now I've got so many sponsors. I don't want to back out anyway, I'm quite looking forward to it. Mad. Quite mad. That's why you love me. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas you only need me to replenish your camping equipment. Oh, there's a little more to it than that. <laughs> but thanks anyway. Oh, that's all right. How's Jill? Very controlled. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, well, the days between the death and the funeral are often like that. There's so much to do. Mm. The real grieving happens afterwards. Well, she's a strong woman. Yes, and very well supported. Indeed. Now, are you hungry? I am famished. 
What did you have in mind for supper? Well, I think you need feeding up for your imminent ordeal. Oh, I wouldn't argue with that. Except for the word ordeal. And I know just the way to do it. Uh, right. Uh, well, the winner of the boys under 15 race is um, uh, Jamie Parks. So, uh, as soon as we get some more pancakes, we'll have the under 15 girls to the start line, please. Here they are, Mum. Frida made these a bit thicker. Oh, good. Their mothers were just falling apart when the kids tossed them. Frida sent one up to Sid. He asked for extra ice cream. Oh, so he's recovered then? Yeah, looks like it. <laughs> so this is what he had in mind. It is pancake day. Well, that's what I was planning to cook anyway. Savoury crepes. Oh, we've got those here. Vegetarian. We've got cheese and ham and veggie ones, Usha. Oh, great. And are you doing sweet ones? Oh, yes, yes. We've got um, chocolate, honey, marshmallow, mm. blueberries, oh. cherries, traditional sugar and lemon. Right then. Alan will have a veggie one to start, followed by the cheese and ham, and then a sweet one for dessert. Which topping on the sweet one? All of them. <laughs> what? Well, it's traditional. <laughs> Isn't this one of your feast days? Ah, yeah. Well, you got me there. Yeah. Feast today and fast tomorrow. I'll have to start before then, I think. What do you mean? Well, uh, if I'm going to be stuffed with all that, better do something to work it off. Uh, Jolene? Yeah? Will you accept a late entrant into the men's over 40? I could have come up the drive. That's all right. I don't mind walking down. Yeah, it's not very nice weather. So how's it been at home? Horrible. Dad's like he's in a trance. Mum's twittering around trying to make everything normal, as if. What about your brothers? Well, I haven't seen much of Josh. He's been helping Dad with the lambing a lot. And ben just doesn't really seem to get it. Well, how old is he? Seven, nearly eight. Well, pretty young. Were you close to your granddad? Yeah, I was. I was named after him. How does that work? Fizz? Philippa. He was Phil. <laughs> yeah, cool. He really liked music. He played the piano. We used to do duets, and he accompanied me when I was playing the clarinet or singing. He really taught me a lot. That's like my granddad. My mum's dad. He was a brilliant artist. What, like famous? Yeah, well, you know, he had a good reputation. But he made a living at it? Not exactly. No, he worked for the council. But he was the one who got me into doing fine art. Ah, is that what you did before this web design course? Well, I did it a couple of years. After my art foundation course. But it wasn't really right for me. Too pretentious, you know? Oh, yeah, totally. I didn't really get on with it conceptually. It wasn't real enough. So that's when I went to Thailand, because I'd never done a gap year, and I really felt I'd missed out. Oh, I'd love to go to Thailand. Lots of places like that. Yeah, it was such a brilliant experience. And coming back and doing ceramics, I could, you know, blend all those influences. Cool. In Thailand, craftsmen are considered the true artists. Do you still ever make stuff like that? No, not really. Not once the web thing caught my imagination. You make a pot, only a few people can use it. Do a website and it's millions. Mm. What does your granddad think about it? He died when I was 18. Oh. Long time ago, then. But, like I say, I was very close to him. So I really know what you're going through, Fizz. I'm here for you. Thanks. But... I mean, I loved my granddad to bits. But, you know, it's my birthday. I really need to think about something else. Yeah, J sure. Just for one night. Does that make me a bad person? No, not at all. You could never be a bad person. Oh. So, let me tell you what I've got planned for your birthday evening. We're going to start with a cocktail at Smooth. <laughs> Cocktails? And then we're going to McGinty's Diner. I love that place. Have you ever had the hog sandwich? No. It's my favourite, with curly fries. <laughs> and then? Uh, well, um, there's, uh, there's all sorts of things we could do then. Uh, Whispers might have a DJ on. On a Wednesday? Or, uh, um, I thought we'd play it by ear. You don't have to be up early or anything, do you? No way, not in half term. What's going on there? Where? We've got travellers. Look, they're, they're putting up a tent. <laughs> no, that's not travellers. That's our vicar. What's the vicar doing camping on the village green? <laughs> Don't ask. It won't be much longer. Oh, that's okay. 
I could manage with my head torch now if you want. No, it's fine. We've done the worst bit. Yeah, true. You all right, Isha? Who's that? It's Helen. Oh. Oh, hello, Helen. I wondered if you needed a hand. No, no, it's all under control, thanks. Oh, you weren't saying that ten minutes ago. No, well, a bit of a struggle. This wasn't exactly plan A. Oh, you're telling me. See, Helen, I had meant to put the tent up this afternoon in the light. You know I'm camping all through Lent. Uh, yeah, I didn't think Usha had thrown you out. <laughs> Not yet. But I was called to the laurels to give communion to a lady who isn't expected to last the night. Well, I can hardly complain, can I? What, I saw Jack there. Really? Yeah, I had a little chat, but uh, he didn't recognise me, I'm afraid. No, he wouldn't have done. I'm not sure he knows who any of us is, except Gran. Yeah, very sad. Yeah. Well, if you're sure you're all right... Oh, yes, he's only holding the torch now. You, you look a bit cold. Mm. Well, I'm going to be cooking up a hot meal soon. <laughs> That'll make all the difference. <laughs> OK, well, I need to get back to the farm. Dad's birthday dinner. Oh, wish him many happy returns. Well, it was yesterday, actually. Mum and Dad had a meal out. All right. Well, I'm sure it'll be a lovely family evening. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure it will be. Mm. Can you pass the wine, Dad? Oh, there's not much left. Shall I open the one I brought? Well, get that down your first, Tom. Oh. You want some more beef, Helen? Oh, no, I'm fine, thanks. Tony? Uh, I could force a bit more down. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> Have you finished those books we bought you yet, Dad? Oh, haven't even started them. Might have to wait until I'm retired to do them justice. <laughs> ah, but it was a smashing present. You must thank Brenda again for me. I will. She was sorry she couldn't make it tonight. How was the dairy today, Mum? Oh, quite frantic, I have to admit. At one point, I did wonder if Dad was going to have to cook his own birthday meal. Well, has Clary still got this virus? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Well, Anya's away all week visiting her family, and I, I promised Kirsty she could have today off. Oh, no, I do understand. She was going to Langton Reservoir. The nature reserve? Oh, that's meant to be a twitcher's paradise. Kirsty's not exactly a twitcher. Oh, she's definitely getting more into birding since she met Patrick. Well, as long as you can work in the dairy tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, then we'll be able to catch up. Good. Has been tight, though, not replacing Colin. Oh, it's worked OK, hasn't it? Yeah, most of the time. But it only needs one thing to go wrong. Well, you'll be all right tomorrow. Um, I, I've got something to tell you all. Oh, yes? It's a sort of personal decision. I've decided I want to have a baby. You... Helen? How are you... G well, by donor sperm... What? I've been researching it, and I've decided it's the best way. You don't need a baby. Do you? you haven't even got a boyfriend. I'm very aware of that. That's why I've chosen this option. This isn't an option. This is... Tom, did you know about this? I'm as surprised as you are. You don't think it's a good idea, do you? Well, I'm, I'm a bit stunned, to be It's honest. madness. Oh, thanks, Dad. Helen, don't you think you might be... Well, you know, with Leon and, and, and then Annette leaving so suddenly... Uh... I'm not trying to replace them, if that's what you're thinking. Thinking is precisely the problem. You're not thinking. Tony, please. You're not saying you agree with her, surely, Pat. I just want to be It'll sure... It'll ruin your life, Helen. Oh, what, like having us ruined yours, you mean? That was different. That was... That was normal. This is perfectly normal. You're not a heifer. It isn't like sending for the AI man. I think I probably know more about what it entails than you do. It's not just having the baby, Helen. It's for life. I know. That's what I want. You haven't got the first idea what's involved. This isn't just some rash decision. I'm just not sure it's... I've thought long and hard about this. Frankly, I'd hope for a bit more encouragement from my family. But whatever you think about it, I've made up my mind. That's mine, if you just hang on to that for a moment. Oh, well, hurry up, then. Uh, we are keep the wind out. The food gets cold so quickly. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Mm, well, that's good. Look out, mind your elbow. All right. It's all very well cooking one nice meal. You've got to do 40 odd. <laughs> well, it's just me eating. They won't all be as ambitious as this one. I worry about you. Oh, no. It's not like I've turned my back on civilization. <laughs> it's only the night times. I can still have a hot bath when I want one, put my clothes in the washing machine. It's a luxury, really. Luxury? I think we must own different dictionaries, Alan. <laughs> Look, I know you're cold. Look, as soon as you finish, you get off home. Well. No, it's fine. Well, 
I'll wash up and get into my sleeping bag. Shall I put the trifle in the fridge? Yeah, can you put a plate on top of it first? It's oh, an awful lot left. Oh, it'll get eaten. So, um, what do you think, Tom? Honestly? Mm -hmm. I think she's crazy. Oh, Tom, not you as well. She's only 30, for God's sake. She's got years yet. Exactly. This is all because of the abortion. Helen thinks she failed with the net, and now this is her way of making up. Making up to who? Well, I don't know, do I? Life? Karma? Who knows how her mind works? Tom's right. Why, anyone would think that a miserable life as a single mother was the answer to anything. Well, she might not be miserable. And she might not be single forever. Oh, come on, Pat. Who's going to take her on with a kid attached? <laughs> take her on? I'm... This is not the 1950s. It'll screw up any chance of a normal relationship. She'll be left on the shelf with a screaming kid in tow and no support. Who says she won't have any support? Well, if there's no man... If she goes through with it, then, then we'll support her. Well, how can we? Uh, I'm not saying I don't have concerns. But you know Helen. She's nothing if not thorough. And if she says she's thought through the issues, then we need to respect her. A child needs a father, Pat. Is she saying I counted for nothing? Oh, of course she values you as a father. She's not doing this to spite you. You know how difficult it is bringing up kids when there are two of you. But how's she going to manage with work? And what about the cost? Women do manage. What about when it's older, though, Mum? Once they get to 18, they can find out who their real father is. Can they? Oh, yeah. They changed the law. Oh, so this poor kid could discover their dad some, some sperm donor who Helen's never met. What a nightmare. And what sort of bloke becomes a sperm donor anyway? A public-spirited one. Oh, yes, yes, of course. It's this control thing, isn't it? What? Helen. She always freaks out when she's not in control. She couldn't control Annette, and now she's come up with this balmy idea. Yeah, and once she's done it, she's lumbered for life. Oh, no, no just stop it, the pair of you. All this negativity isn't going to help. We've got to focus on Helen and what she needs. Thinks she needs. All right. What she thinks she needs. We're going to have to talk some sense into her. No. That's just the attitude that had her walking out earlier. Now can you please leave this with me? So he said I had to do the assignment again. What a pillar. Lecturers like that really get on my nerves. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I'll tell you what, though. <laughs> Marco did this animation with him drinking this tiny drink and then throwing up all over his shoes. <laughs> did he? Uh, I feel a little unwell. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. You should put it on the internet. Yeah, I should. In fact, I might do that. Serve him right if I transfer to photography. Would you do that? Would it show him? You're too good for that course. I know more than he does. That's his problem. Right. Should we try whispers then? Come here first. <laughs> what was that for? For being perfect. This is so what I needed tonight. Going on, mate? Oh, hello, Eddie. It's you, David. Yeah, I've got a couple of barren cows to sell. Right. I didn't realise you'd started work here. First day. Finished me induction about an hour ago. Induction? Oh, all straightforward stuff. Uh huh. You got it? Yeah. Okay, and down. Yeah. Uh. Out you come. Work goes on, eh? Yeah. Glad of it, really. It'd be no use just moping around. Oh, I know what you mean. And with the lambing taking off, I've got plenty to do. Yeah. You know, if you do need more of a hand, all you have to do is shout. I'm not uh, saying just for the money. <laughs> I know that, Eddie. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, Pip and Josh have been helping the last few days, you know, half term. Oh, that's good. But we do need to think about next week, especially the day of the funeral. Oh, well... If I could help out then. Yeah, but the only thing is, it would mean that you wouldn't be able to go to the funeral yourself. 
If you weren't thinking of paying. Well, well, yeah, I probably would have, but, well, it's like, uh, it's a, a different way of paying my respects, ain't it? Well, I suppose it is. Keeping things going at Brookfield. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in a way, that's what I feel. Keeping the farm going for him. He, uh, he was really proud of you, you know. <laughs> I don't know about that. No, no, straight up. Anyone could see that. Well, thanks. Come on, girls. This way. You all right? Oh, you've only got about 15 minutes to the sale. No, I know. It's taken me ages to get here. Trouble is, we're fighting with all the commuters coming into work. Yeah? The market's outgrown this site, really. Hey, look, I get a tea break at 10.30. You fancy a couple in the market cap? Yeah. Yeah, why not? I'll see you there. I'm fed up with Pat, I really am. Just the chocolate, Susan, for the journey. What journey? You're only going into Borchester. 49p. All right. Uh, put the penny in the blind box, will you? OK. Now they're talking about appointing team leaders for the volunteers. Yeah? They haven't thought it through. It's obvious. Right. I mean, if they do that, it's going to be too many chiefs and not enough Indians, isn't it? <laughs> what do they need me for? Well, they're just going to I... ignore me. I might as well give up. Do you want to resign, then, from the committee? Well, actually, Neil, I think I do. Oh, yeah, well, I'd just leave them to it. I don't know how you put up with it. What? Well, these committees. They're just an ego trip, aren't they? Oh, well, the parish council's not too bad. Still, you'll be able to sort that out when you're chairman. I don't think there's much chance of me getting elected. Why not? <laughs> not up against Linda. I only agreed to stand because David badgered me. You're not saying people will pick her over you. Well, look at all she does in the village. Oh, you know what she's like. Oh, yeah, energetic, determined. Oh, bullet a gate, tactless. You've got to have diplomacy for that job, haven't you? Oh, yeah, I suppose. If there's one thing that woman isn't, it's a... It's a what? Morning. Hey, huh? Morning, Linda. And here's my plucky opponent. <laughs> <laughs> May I say, I am so glad you put yourself forward, Neil. Are you? Oh, yes. It's important that democracy is not just done, but that it's seen to be done. After all, we don't want a coronation, do we? Uh, no, no, no. Anyway, I've got to go. I'm seeing someone in Borchester. Mm, don't let me keep you. Right, I'll see you later, love. OK. Until tonight. Get that down, you. Oh, thanks, Eddie. <sighs> you all right? I was thinking when I was a kid, a trip to market was quite a treat. Oh, I bet. If I was good, Dad might buy me a bottle of Coke and a sausage sandwich. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, you reckon you're going to enjoy the job then? Oh, yeah. Champion. Looks like I'll keep busy. Great. I've seen a lot of my old mates. Uh -huh. <laughs> and here's another one, look. Oh, hello, David. Hi, Neil. How are you doing? Oh, you know. Yeah. Ah, I miss your dad, too. He was good to me. Thanks, Neil. I'm surprised to see you here. Don't you do all your buying and selling direct? Oh, I had to come into the bank. So Eddie persuaded me to drop in here first. Ah. Have you sorted out that picture of Clary yet no. on your van? It were never a picture of Clary. It was a metamorphical representation. <laughs> That's what Bert's friend Noddy called it. Well. <laughs> Proud of it I was, but Clary took right against it as soon as she saw it. Oh, shame. And yet he's painted over it. More's the pity. Oh, just as well. Anyway, never mind that. What about the vicar? Huh? Wonder what Usha thinks about him being away from home for 40 days. Well, he won't be far from home, and he's only camping out at night. Exactly. It's 40 nights, isn't it? <laughs> and Usha's a healthy woman, know what I mean? Eddie. Actually, Usha does have mixed feelings about it. She was telling Ruth. She knows it's for a good cause, but... Well. <laughs> I bet she does. <laughs> well, and you're old Neil. Uh, tonight's the night, eh? What? You take over the reins of power. Mm. Uh, Susan coming to see the vote, is she? Actually, she is. Oh? And I told her she's going to be disappointed.
Evening, Linda. Hi, to Chris. Hello. Evening, David. I'm just going to check they've switched the urn on. I won't be a moment. All right. Hello again, Neil. Oh, evening. How's the family? Oh. Oh, how have Pip's celebrations gone? Have you come hot foot from her birthday supper? <laughs> I have. How was it? Oh, you know, we, we all made an effort. Ruth was brilliant, but it was a bit, well, subdued, to say the least. Oh, it's only natural. Yeah, and Pip dropped a bit of a bombshell. Really? Well, it's just a work thing. This Jude bloke has asked her around tomorrow, so she's not going to be able to help with the lambing, just as it was getting really busy. Oh. Yeah. Right, uh, well, it looks like we're all here. Shall we kick off? Yeah. Right. Let's go. Hello, everyone. Yeah. So, uh, if you're all ready, we'll start, shall we? Um, yeah. Yes, if I could just say, David and Christine, that I am sure I speak for everyone. When I say how sorry we all are for your loss. Thank you. Yes, yes. yes. much appreciated. And I'm sure we all agree how laudable it is that, despite your grief, you've both turned out this evening to serve the community. Uh, well, as I say, thank you, Linda, but uh, let's crack on, shall we? Ah. Yeah. Now, the first item of business is the election of a new chair, now that Derek has resigned. Uh, my understanding is that we have two candidates, so can we just check that? Anyone know any different? So, other than Neil and Linda, are there any other nominations? Nope. So, on a show of hands, then. Uh, votes for Neil Carter. Ooh. And for Linda Snell. Well, that's very clear. Neil Carter is duly elected Chair of Ambridge Parish Council. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Gosh. <laughs> so, Neil, uh, if you'd like to swap with me. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll never... Um, oh, right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, don't forget your minutes. Oh. Uh, yeah. Congratulations, Neil. Very well done. Oh, thanks, Linda. Right. <clears throat> OK, then. Uh, um, item two, apologies. There haven't been any requests from the parish to have an election, so we could just co-opt someone to replace Derek to serve until the next election date. Mm. If we can find someone willing to serve. Uh, yes, yes. If uh, I could make a suggestion, Neil, I was wondering about Oliver Sterling as parish councillor. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, David. Uh, would he be up for it? Well, I don't know, but he'd be worth approaching, I think. Huh. Could you sound him out? I'd be happy to. OK, then. Yeah. Unless anyone else has any suggestions. No. Right. Um, item seven. Six, oh. actually. Oh, oh, yes, sorry, six. Um, uh, appointment of new parish clerk. Um, that's you again, Christine. Oh, uh, yes. Well, as you know, I'm retiring and I'm pleased to say that Professor Jim Lloyd was the successful candidate in the interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll be handing everything over to him through the next month and talking to him about training and so on. And he'll be your clerk for the March meeting. Right. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> and uh, I think it'd be in order for me to propose a vote of thanks for all the hard work you've put into keeping us on the straight and narrow for... Well, how long is it? Seven years. Oh. <laughs> well, you've done a brilliant job and we'll all miss you. Here, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Neil, if I could add that if everybody wants to stay on for a few minutes after the meeting... Oh, yes, yes. So uh, we've got a little present for you, Christine. Oh. And there'll be a glass of something from Robert and me to wish Christine a long and happy retirement. <laughs> well, that's very nice of you all. There, there really was no need. Nonsense. Good service deserves recognition. <laughs> I would have thought we'd all agree on that. Um, the last item is uh, graffiti, but I'm not sure... Uh, excuse why... me, I asked for this to be put on the agenda, so if I might be permitted to speak to it? Yes, of course, Linda. Thank you. I'm sure I can't be the only one who's noticed an increase in the pernicious scourge of graffiti, which is once again sullying our village. Yes, well, we'd better get some of the cleaning chemicals from the district council, oh, I think. Oh, no, that's not the answer. Ah. We need to catch the perpetrators. Oh, that's easier said than done. Neil, 
It's time this village was mobilised to uncover the enemy within. Mm, that's a bit strong, isn't it? It's probably just a few bored kids. Graffiti today, vandalism tomorrow, who knows what sort of crimes the day after that. I don't think we can start turning villagers into some sort of vigilante squad. No, uh, I, I think uh, perhaps just asking people to keep their eyes open. Oh, well, yes, and look how successful that's been. And we'll order another batch of the cleaning materials. No, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I really think... I think this is an issue on which strong leadership is required. <sighs> I'm not sure what else can be done. <clears throat> no, Neil. Quite. <coughs> so we'll revisit the issue on a future date. Thanks, everyone. Uh, meeting adjourned. Oh, right. Christine, I hope you Good have stuff, a Neil. Oh. Do you think so? Yeah. Didn't he do well, Susan? He was brilliant. Oh, I'm so proud of you. My husband, the chairman. Well, <laughs> and the uh, best thing was the look on Linda's face. Talk about sucking lemons. So how did it go on Wednesday? A Langton? Great. So did you wander around or...? No, we just stayed in one of the hides. But just you and Patrick? Uh, one of the bloke arrived towards the end. He didn't chase you out? <laughs> no, we'd been there nearly three hours by then. Really? You know, it's getting a bit brass monkeys. Yeah, I can imagine. And did you see any interesting species? Oh, yeah. Lots of ducks, of course. Mallard and teal, things like that. Oh, and we saw some finchy-type birds as well. Um, brambling and siskin. <laughs> you are getting knowledgeable, Kirsty. <laughs> no, not me. Patrick's the expert. Not in a bad way. Sorry? I mean, you know, he's, he's not like an anorak. He knows a lot, but, you know, he wears it lightly. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfectly. And he really... Oh, I don't know. He respects the birds. They aren't just things to tick off on a list. They're not your stereotypical twitcher, then? No. Although he wanted me to see a great crested grebe. Ah. Uh -huh. They're really elegant on the water, apparently. He showed me a picture in a book afterwards. Afterwards? We went to a cafe for afternoon tea and, and to warm up. Sounds nice. Oh, it was lovely. An open fire and homemade farmhouse cake. Morning. Oh, hello. Oh, hi, Jill. Hello, Kirsty. Jill, I haven't had a chance to say how sorry I am about Phil. Thank you. Are you on your own? I've come in with Shula. Oh, right. We've both got things to do, and we're going to meet up for the return journey. Oh, that's nice. Oh, Annie's going to cover the shop on Tuesday, so we'll both be coming to the funeral. You too, Kirsty? Oh, yes. I remember how patient Phil was with us when we were doing the Mikado. He was a really nice man. Yes, he was. Were you looking for something in particular, as well as the biscuits? The Ceylon tea you usually have in the yellow packet. Oh, we're out of that at the moment. But we are due a delivery soon, very soon. And that's why I'm here, to help put it all away. I'm not sure I'll have the time to call back. Well, that's all right. I could drop a packet in for you. That's very kind, Helen, but I wouldn't want to bother you. Well, that's no trouble, really. I'll be going right past your door. Well, all right then, thank you. I think we'd better make it two packets. So, um, is Clary better now? Yeah, she seems to be. But she had a bit of bad news for me. Uh -huh. Susan's thinking of taking out an unfair dismissal claim. She's what? If her hours are reduced substantially, uh, she's within her rights. Oh, Pat, that's the last thing Mum needs. I know. And the whole project could do without the bad feeling. Uh. So, I've been wondering about offering Susan work here. Uh, in the dairy? Mm. Helen and I were discussing it the other day. Well? Well, we could work it around Susan's hours at the post office and whatever she gets in the shop. Uh, you know how tight it's been without Colin. And you think then she might drop her claim? It's possible. Uh, and whatever you might say about Susan, she is a good worker. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I suppose so. Are you going to mention it to her now? When I do the delivery? Yes. No, not yet. But if you're happy in principle, I'll discuss it some more with Helen. So, you and Patrick. Yeah? Are you sure you're just friends? Nothing more to it? I really don't think so. Well, certainly not at the moment. Morning! Oh, hi. Let hi. me take that, Pat. Thanks, Kirsty. Oh, it's Delivery City here this morning. I've just got one more. Uh, shall I pop it down here? Oh, let me move this. Oh, thanks, love. 
I just heard some news from Susan in the village shop. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Neil is the new parish council chairman. So, not Linda, then? A landslide, apparently. Well, good for him. Did you have a nice day with your friend, Kirsty? Oh, yeah, it was great, thanks. In fact, it started me thinking about your wetland area. Should be a great habitat when it's mature. Yeah, we hope so. Right, I'll take this veg through. Give us a bit of room oh, in here. thanks. How was Susan? To me? Not particularly friendly. She was actually telling Pat Fletcher the news about Neil. Mm. Oh, but never mind that. Um, you're in the dairy with Clary this afternoon, aren't you? Yes. Could you come a bit earlier? Maybe have some lunch? I I'd really like to talk through this baby idea. Oh, hi, Pat. Ah, will you be long? No, just a sandwich. Uh, because Helen's just pulled into the yard. Oh, good. I want a word with her. About work? No, uh, about this mad desire to have a baby. No, Tony, absolutely not. We agreed that I'd talk to her. You had all yesterday to do that. <sighs> I wanted to let things calm down. But I mentioned it at the shop and she's agreed to talk now. So, I'm going to be banished from my own kitchen. Oh, don't be so melodramatic. No, it's all right. I get the message. I'll finish my lunch in the pack house. Oh. Hello, Dad. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm just off. Right, see you later. Come on in, Helen. I'll put the kettle on. And should we have a bite to eat? Uh, just a drink, Mum, thanks. OK. Is Dad all right? No, oh, he's just worried about you. There's no need to be. I'm a grown-up. I can make my own decisions about my own life. Yes, but having a baby, it's such a big decision, love. I know that. There's so much to think about. And I have. And, you know, once they're 18, a child has the right to know who their father is. Yes. Well, doesn't that worry you? It's not like I'll be keeping things secret, Mum. As soon as the baby's old enough, I'm, I'm going to let it know exactly how it was conceived. Isn't that going to be difficult? My baby will know that I really, really wanted to have it. And wouldn't you worry who the father is? Well, all the donors are screened. It is very hard work bringing up a child, especially on your own. Lots of other women do it. Yeah, but if you ask them, most of them probably wouldn't have chosen to do it that way. Well, I can't speak for them. I'm not afraid of hard work. And it will be much harder to find a partner once you do have a child. Oh, this is Dad talking, isn't it? Got to be left on the shelf. He does have a point. It's not as if I haven't tried to find someone, Mum. It's not like I'm 18 and deciding to do this. What about the cost? Well, it's around 2000 I've got the savings. Well, look, that's just the start. I mean, what about... All the equipment, childcare. You're not saying that I can't afford it on my salary. No, but I'm I just... Surely we're in the best possible situation. I'm not commuting into Birmingham at some unearthly hour every day. We run our own business. We can arrange things to suit ourselves. Well, that's all very well, but It would but be I my do... responsibility. But, Mum, I will need your support. I might be doing this without a man, but... I didn't imagine I'd be doing it alone. I, I, I think what we're all worried about is... It's the timing. That you're doing this because Annette had the termination. OK. Yes, I understand that. But honestly, Mum, I think it's the other way round. I think I've had this need in me for some time. And that's why I was so desperate for Annette... For Greg's daughter to, to keep her baby. You were looking forward to the pleasure of a little one living under your roof. So it is a pleasure then. Oh yes, Helen, it is. So, what's the next stage? I've made an appointment with a clinic early in March. Right. Well... I shall support you in any way I can. Oh, Mum, 
Really? Yes. Oh, thank you, thank you. That means so much. I can see how carefully you've thought about it. I didn't, didn't want this to come between us. I think we should have that drink, don't you? Coffee, was it, or tea? <gasps> oh, what? Jill, I've got some tea for her in the car. What, what um, have you got tea? Don't bother with one for me, Mum. I'm just popping round to Glebe Cottage. <sighs> oh, sorry, Dad. Mustache. Uh, right. Uh, what a great success, then. What do you mean? Well, from the speed Helen's going, seems your softly, softly approach didn't cut any ice. On the contrary. I understand where she is now. What? And I'm going to support her. What? I don't believe it. It's the wrong decision, Pat. I don't think so. And you and Tom had better come on side. This is going to be a difficult time for Helen, and I don't want you two making it worse. You've got so many cards. I know, it's lovely. Oh, is this... They're the Valentine cards that Phil and I had bought. But, oh Lord, that was on Sunday. Yes, we never had the chance to give them to each other. Oh, I don't know what to say. There's no need to say anything. You were so lucky to have found someone so lovely... To be with him for so long. I was. I am trying to count my blessings. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. No, no, it's all right. Like a tissue. Yes, please. That's something else I need to stock up with. <laughs> I bet. Here you are. Thank you. There. Now, would you like another cup of tea? Oh, no, thank you. But I'm, I'm pleased I tried it. You're right, it's, it's very good. Refreshing. Mm. As I say, tea and tissues. I seem to have gone through an awful lot of them both this week. <laughs> well, if there's anything else you need from Ambridge Organics, there's, there's no need to come into Borchester. Just give me a ring and I'll be happy to pop it in. That's a very nice offer, Helen. But actually, I think it's good for me to get out of the house and have something to do. I understand. Phil certainly wouldn't approve of me just festering away here. Oh, I don't think there's much chance of that, Auntie Jill. Not your style at all. No. Now, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to go. That's all right. I've got to be in the dairy at one. And thank you so much again for taking the trouble. Any time, really. Mm. Oh. Don't get up. I'll see myself out. Bye-bye. Take care. Mm. I was lucky, Phil. I saw the card you wrote to me, and you never had the chance to read mine, so let me read it to you now. To my husband on Valentine's Day. You mean the world to me, and so much more. <laughs> So much more. Phil, I know this won't be the last time, but I want to say goodbye and... You know I love you, my darling. I always will. <laughs> 